Hey everybody, in this update video, we're gonna be talking about how big of a servo do you really need for the flying surface you have. Now, if you've been one of my longtime followers, you know everything I do is giant scale. Um, if I've designed it and built it myself, it's 160 inches or bigger. I've flown you know, some RFs I've made, but I'm talking about what I've designed and built. And in those large airplanes, you have to do some things to make sure they're safe to fly. And one thing is if you don't use a big enough servo, you can actually stall, stall the servo and the flying surface won't move. So I wanna talk a little bit about servos before we get in some simu into some simulations and a little calculator I created. So about 17 years ago, I bought this, what was called a giant scale servo. It was a high tech uh, 5735 and it at 4.8 volts had 220 ounces and at 6 volts, it had 264 ounces. And I flew a bunch of these on my MSL-1. Now, one thing that I'm not going to get into the math on is when you basically have a flying surface that has part of the flying surface going ahead of your hinge line, it's almost like power steering. It's taking the load off the servo. So some airplanes, uh, like on the elevator, you'll see where it goes forward of the hinge line there's two reasons. There's a counterbalance in there because you want your flying surfaces to always be balanced, but also it helps when it deflects that it's actually going into the wind stream and takes the load off the servo. It's easier to turn into the wind. So this 264 ounces, because I was running everything at six volts back then, was enough to fly the MSL-1. And I had a couple of these on each flying surface. So then, about 10 years ago, I got this um, HS7950, which looks like a standard size servo, okay? But at 4.8 volts, it was 344 ounces of torque. At 6 volts, it was 402. And at 7.4, it was 486. Now, this is what I call one of my standard servos, okay? And, and this does have a little bit more tor torque than some standard servos. But this was an HS, now this is old, like 15 years old. This was an HS5485, and it had 72 ounces at 4.8, and it had 89 ounces at 6.0 volts. What I'm flying in my MSL2 is um, a whole bunch of Futaba S-Bus servos, and they are the S9177 SV S-Bus 2s. They are... Um, 511 ounces of torque at 6.6 .6 volts or at 7.2, they are uh, 569 ounces of torque. So what we're gonna do now is look at some simulations and look at a calculator I created so I know how big my flying surface has to be. So we'll be right back. Okay, let's jump into this real quick. So I've got a couple of little simulations I wanna show you here. So when you think about the way you're airplane is set up, you need to think about how do you get the torque to the control surface first of all, uh, in the first place. Most people want to put a big arm out here and put a short, uh, set it on the shortest hole in the control arm here so they can get as much throw as possible, okay? But the reality of this, and hang on a minute, let me open up something here and show you how it works. So the reality is that if you are truly going to set up your radio. So if you notice here, at 15 degrees of the servo movement, the arm movement, over here you already have 29 degrees. On most airplanes, 29 degrees is absolutely what you want on like a Cub, on most general aviation flying airplanes. That way if you're a little bit nose heavy, you've got enough uh, elevator to still give you flare authority. I mean, if the plane's perfectly balanced on the CG, I've flown them at 20 degrees and they're fine, but most people like to fly nose heavy. So, but if you notice here, you're only getting 15 degrees, which means each up and down of your sticker left and right, you'd only be getting 30 degrees of travel. Well, you're not using much of the resolution of your servo there. So if you really wanted to get, you know, where the servo could go, well, now you've got a ridiculous amount of elevator, but, people will take their radio and set up their end uh, points back down to that 15 or 20, which means you're killing your resolution. So the best way that I've done it is like this. I start with the shortest arm on the servo and then start moving around on the elevator until I get the travel I want. 
So let's look at this one for a minute. And I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So on, on this, if we go to 15 degrees on the servo, you know, we've only got about six degrees over here on the control surface. But if we go to the full travel of the servo, which is the uh, 35 degrees, you notice we're at 17 degrees here. That's probably not quite enough. But the crazy cool thing about this is, is by having a short arm here, think about a crowbar or a lever bar, or when you're turning a wrench and you've got to put a pipe on the end of it, how much more force you get. So if you think about putting a long arm on your elevator or your aileron, you got all that leverage to help stabilize it. Plus it prevents flutter. The longer this arm is and the tighter your, your joints are here, the less chance you got to flutter. Now that's not taken into account. You should be dynamically uh, balancing your flying services, but you don't want to, you want this arm to be as short as you can get it. And this arm, as long as you can get it and still get full travel of the full re resolution of the servo. That way you're getting the highest possible torque to your flying surface. Okay. So let's go in this little calculator I built here. So basically here, I've got a couple of different airplanes I put in here of mine. But I'm going to start with the MSL2 elevator. So the span of it is 31 inches. The root cord is 7.4. The tip cord is 3.8. And it basically it's got a swoosh to it. So I kind of took into a little bit of liberties of figuring that out. Or I shouldn't say a swoosh, a curved trailing edge. Um, my servo arm was at 2 inches from its pivot point, And my control arm on the elevator was 2.4 inches. My air factor, so if you come down here and look at these air factors, this is basically, you know, the way that you look at different speeds, okay? So they, they don't have a lot of miles per hour on these until you start getting down into the turbine stuff. But when you think about, you know, propeller or soaring glider airplane with those regiments, which only uh, have level flight, you know, flat turns, gentle climbs, moderate dives, 1.25. Uh, propeller or soar, soar, soaring slash gliding airplanes uh, flight regimen is modest aerobatics including loops, rolls, inverted flight, and spins, 1.5. So I put my MSL2 at the 1.5, okay? And then I it told me basically I need this amount of torque. Okay, now if I put a, a torque factor of 3.0 in here, look where my torque went. It went up ginormously. Okay. So the faster you go, the more torque you're going to need. So you don't stall it, stall the servo. Okay. When you think of my ailerons, I put in all the dimensions of my ailerons on this aircraft. Okay. 32 inches across. Uh, the root cord is about 7.6. The tip cord is about 3.66. Servo arm is the same as above. And the air factor is 1.5. It tells me I need 422 ounces. And you know, I told you I'm flying um, 511 ounce servos, so I'm I'm fine there. One thing I did do some testing with is with my S bus servos. They have telemetry, so I can look at the current. If I remember right, on my uh, S9177 servos that have 511 ounces at 6.6 .6 volts, I at my fastest speed in a dive, pulling up as hard as I could, I was pulling three amps. I believe that servo, when I tested it, stalled at 6.1 amps. So you, it's hard, I know, for you to do these measurements because you don't have the telemetry on your servos, but you can definitely stall a servo. And luckily, I'm only pulling about half the amperage that it would take to stall the servo. But I did take the servo out of the airplane and I physically held it with a wrench and stalled it, measured the amperage, and I believe it was 6.2 or 6.3 amps, if I remember right. I might be wrong there, but I know it was over, um, I know it was at least 6 amps. And 3.2 or 3.4, I believe, was the most my telemetry ever told me I had on the elevator up here of the MSL2. So basically, if you're designing an airplane, like I'm working on a plane called the Fry Mustine which if you followed me for a couple of years, it is one of my biggest ever. It's got like a 200 and uh, I think it's 60 inch wingspan, but the elevator on it is massive. And that elevator is going to require 955 ounces of torque to work properly. 
but I'll put two of my 511 ounce servos on it and I'll be fine. So you can always double up on servos. The ailerons on this plane are massive too, but they're only gonna need 321, so the 511 ounce uh, servos will work. So I hope this makes sense, everybody. I, I don't know how to stress with you how important it is to understand how the, the leverage works on servos. You know, if you've ever put a pipe on a wrench or you've ever or, or on a socket set to break it loose, you know, called a cheater bar, you'll understand how much more torque you get on something the longer the moment arm is. So when you think of your elevator, the longer this moment arm is, the more torque there is. If you had a big long arm on your servo, of course, that is going to slow, I mean, that's gonna put lo more load on the servo. Um, a good experiment to do, and it's pretty fun, is take a high torque servo, put a round servo wheel on it, and try to hold it just with your hand when you're moving the stick, and it's really almost impossible to do. Okay, so that's this part of the video, everybody. Rock on. And we're back, everybody. So hopefully that all made sense. Um, I guess the thing, if you're small, flying a small airplane or a plane that's that factory built, all that, you don't have to worry about this. If you're scratch building large airplanes and you want to be able to get it wavered under the AMA, LMA1, or LMA2, you're gonna have to do these calculations to figure out how big your servo needs to be. If you look at the air factor, if you're gonna go slow, you need a lot less torque, you need a lot smaller servo. If you're gonna go ultra fast with a big heavy plane, you're gonna need some torque. And that might mean you have multiple servos, like I mentioned. So I hope this made sense. I hope you liked the videos, everybody. If you like them, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. If you want to get that little calculator I created, just reach out to me through YouTube and I'll give you my Gmail account and I'll send you the little um, spreadsheet calculator I created. So thanks for watching my videos, everybody. Everybody, <laughs> Have an awesome day and be safe.